Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Matthew Orr from Wet Ink Games, and I am joined tonight by Michael Brennan. He's a uh, an actor and a playwright and a TTRPG designer. So, uh, Michael, hello. Welcome to this uh, little Hi. interview. Yeah, hello. Great to be here. So I've got some questions for you tonight, starting with, like, uh, you know, this is going to be this is nerd. This is peak nerd content, right? We're we're promoting our Kickstarter for a TTRPG about psychic kids. Uh, but if anyone needs any more proof about like your bona fides in terms of like your nerddom, like what kind of nerdy stuff are you into generally? Uh, yeah, I um, as as you might guess based on you know uh, the sort of vibe of psychic uh, kids, I really uh, I'm into animation uh a lot um you know all all sorts of stuff i mean you know shows like adventure time and uh regular show i think are fantastic and i also love anime at, at the same time there's there's a little bit of akira in psychic kids you know as as i'm sure right. anybody could tell just from looking at it uh and uh on top of that um i'm uh i'm really into cooking uh, I do a lot of, you know, home cooking, watching a lot of cooking videos, uh, and uh, uh, also pretty fond of, you know, uh, history. I listen to a lot of history podcasts uh, oh, and, man. yeah, and video games, what, you know. Yeah. So what's your, what's your, so you named, you named some, some animation shows. So what's, what, what's, what about, like, what's a favorite dish to cook? Uh, so I, I really like um, a lot of uh, uh, Asian food. Um, you know, uh, the uh, kimchi jjigae, it's this like spicy Korean stew uh, that's fantastic. I, I love making that. Um, I've got, you know, uh, a really nice rice cooker. So I just make a lot of uh, stir fries and uh, that sort of thing. Um, I actually, I, I don't eat uh, any uh, pork or beef. Um, so there's a lot of really great stuff with like fish and rice and uh, chicken, you know, tofu, things like that as proteins that I, I enjoy. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I, I had, what I, I had, I made fried seitan tonight myself. So it was, uh, it's, uh, you know, wheat, wheat, wheat uh, protein uh the um and i want to ask you about the history podcast do you have one that you'd like to listen to like what what's a top not necessarily your fate you don't don't pick your favorite but name, right. name a top one right uh well the uh i really like the really like long form in-depth stuff so uh i'm a big fan of the revolutions series mm, yeah. um that that just wrapped up recently but you know it that's did. all going into like this the big history of like this sort of you know, all the, the big revolutions in, like, world history, finishing up with, like, the, the Russian revolutions that led to, you know, the USSR. Um, yeah. That one's that one's great. Um, yeah. I also uh, really like uh, Stuff You Missed in History Class. Um, that's a more of a smaller uh, uh, sort of thing. You know, they do, you know, an episode or two a week of, like, just interesting, weird stories from, from history. And a lot right. of those are more focused on, like, the people who don't show up as much in in our history classes, you know, like them people, people of color, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, hello, Walter. Oh, yeah. You gotta. I I have listened to uh, stuff you missed in history class, and uh, I I definitely listened to all of Revolution. So we're uh, yeah. we're uh, we're on the same page there. Um, all right, so I want to focus in a little bit from like general nerddom into like TTRPG. So like, how did you get into TTRPG? I'm sure this is not your first like foray into it. So like, what 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 led to what what was the lead in? What how did you get into that this particular part of the hobby? Yeah, um, so I was uh, I actually didn't uh, get into to TTRPGs until. Um, college uh but i uh i was in a, a theater program uh and one of my friends in the program was running a game of shadow run uh i think shadow run fourth edition probably um but you know 
one of them, big fistfuls of D6s and and nonsense like that. Um, and, you know, that was my, my first time uh, playing that. I'd been doing, you know, theater and everything for a while. And then that sort of like combination of like getting to do some like, you know, acting and playing a character while doing this narrative was just, I mean, it hooked me immediately. And then uh, when I went home that summer, you know, I, I got like a, mu- a bunch of my nerdy friends together. And I was like, guys, like for s- somehow we haven't played like any uh, tabletop RPGs, but it turns out these are great. So like, let's let's get into them. Uh, and we all started, you know, we got into to, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, World of Darkness stuff. And then as I got even more into it, I started to get really interested in like the, the indie games that were starting to get big around that time, too. Yeah. yeah. What's some of the early ones that that you came to from that side? The the you know, the ones that maybe don't focus quite so much on big pools of D6s. Yeah, yeah. So uh I think I want to say the very first kind of like non, you know, major uh RPG was actually uh this world building game called Dawn of Worlds. Okay. Um yeah, which is like it's it's less so a, a, a role playing game, but more um, a sort of system for building a setting to yeah. then play in a uh, an RPG. So you know, me and my friends were you know gathered in a, a, a basement and you know drawing out these little maps and like uh, everybody gets to pick like a thing that they want to do. And like I remember specifically, like we decided we wanted our elves to you know be different because everyone wants different al- elves, and uh, our elves basically ended up cowboys. <laughs> uh, you know, they were they were big into like they we we assigned them traits of like horsemanship, and we gave them you know like gunpowder weapons and stuff, and we're like, well, we just we just made cowboy elves. Cowboy elves, I I yeah. I haven't seen it before, but I like it. I yeah. like it. I think it's got some there's there's potential there. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's great. And so have you, so, I mean, there's so many questions, right? Like swirling around, but like you kind of got into it already, but like you were already, it was theater people who introduced you to role-playing. So like how far back then does the theater go for you? Um, you know, like drama kid before, before RPG players. So like, where, like, how did you get into that world then? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, um, when I was, uh, you know, I was in high school, um, I was actually really uh, initially focused a lot on uh, math and science. Um, I was taking, uh, you know, AP chemistry courses, but uh, I was also, you know, I mean, part of it was I was just taking basically every AP class that my my school offered to, to get, you know, some college credits built up and stuff because uh, I, was, I was a very ambitious teenager. Um, but uh, one of our one of our uh, class options uh, was actually uh, debate, uh, and that was like a hybrid. You know, it was a class, but it was also a club. Like they did uh, competitions and stuff, and we were like a pretty good, uh, pretty well regarded debate team. Uh, so I got into that from English, and then there was a lot of crossover from the debate club at the time and the drama department. Uh, so getting to know the people in debate, they kind of like introduced me to, you know, drama and stuff. And then uh, the the debate club uh, uh, folded. Um, there was this whole thing with uh, a, a, a protest that we, you know, organized and stuff like that. That's way too much complicated lore to get into. But um, <laughs> basically once... Once the debate club folded, I was like, well, I already know, you know, a bunch of people in in drama uh, and they were doing a production of uh, The Outsiders, uh, the sort of classic you know, novel about greasers in the 50s, um, which is one of my favorite books. Uh, I was like, you know what, I'm just I'm, I'm going to go for it and you know, I'll give it a try uh, audition for it. And uh, I, I got it apart. And then as soon as I started, you know doing acting it was like the the hooks like sank into my brain and was like okay this is this is it like this is what you're into now you know <laughs> so how 
So, I mean, I think it's a pretty, like you said, you just explained it all, like English to debate, to drama, to ultimately like narrative storytelling as spontaneous creation of, of a fantasy world at the table. You know, it, it does seem like a straight through pipeline uh, or a natural progression, I guess. Um, and how, how does that, how do you think that that like, I mean, is, is it just as simple as that? Or is there more that kind of falls in that the middle of that Venn diagram between like the theater arts, the like very set, like this is the script that we're performing versus like, I don't know what's going to happen when we, when we drop these D6s, like, let's, let's see, like, what is that overlap for you both as like just a person and a player and involved in both of those worlds? And then also like as a, as a writer, as a script maker on one side, and then also like a, a, a someone who's written this writes for role-playing games like that. There's gotta be some overlap, but what, what do you see it as the being the overlap? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest overlap for me is just it, it's improv. It's improvisation. Um, I'm I'm a member of the the improv company uh, out here in Bellingham, the Upfront Theater. Uh, I've been involved with that for you know eight years now. Uh, before that, I was doing improv in, in college with the, uh, the uh, Dead Parrot Society, uh, our college team. Uh, did did a tiny bit of improv in high school even, and I really like that collaborative storytelling element, and I think that's part of what you know, uh, like I, I I run the games a lot of the time, right? I mean, person who writes the RPGs kind of makes sense, and <laughs> I'm also right. the the quote forever GM, uh, in a lot of ways, but like figuring out how to adapt and like bring everyone's ideas together uh, to create the story, I think is uh, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's, I think one of the best things that we as humans do is like that collaborative storytelling and like, you know, doing it all together on the fly. And like some of that's based off of, you know, the, the dice uh, that fall or the cards that, you know, we draw or, if it's on a stage, you know, like the words that like just pop into our head or that the audience gives us, you know, it's it, it makes things more vibrant, you know, more alive, which I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a playwright, right? I don't have anything against scripted theater either, but I think that like spontaneity of of improv and RPGs is is really, really nice. Nice, nice. Uh, I mean, that very well said, very well said. Uh, I uh, want to ask you about the Psychic Kids, uh, as it was originally called, Psychic Children on the Run from Danger. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you find the 200 Word RPG Challenge and submit this original uh, version of the game in just that that very narrow format? Like, what, what was that like? Yeah, I I can't. I don't remember uh, the the exact genesis, but I know um, I feel like I'd been reading some of Grant Howitt's one page RPGs uh, uh, that he's been doing, um, and I was really like enchanted by that condensed form, that very small, you know, contained, like working within those limitations. Um, you know, one of uh, uh, one of the things that I do as a playwright uh, is this uh, thing called serial killers, where we write serialized episodic plays and we have to write and produce and perform them uh, each week. Uh, and it's it's an elimination style tournament. You know, we, we get oh, wow. uh, a week to do all this stuff. Um, and I like the way that those limitations force you to do something different something interesting right you can't just yeah. like let your complete unfiltered stuff spill out over everything because you know you'll you'll run out of time or in this case word count uh and so uh a friend of mine i think showed me you know that this was a, a thing that was happening he was writing something for it as well and i was like well that seems really neat you know i i haven't i actually hadn't written anything i hadn't tried writing any games yet 
at the time, that was my first uh, attempt to do anything like that. I was like, oh, it's 200 words. Like, how long could it take? You know, I can <laughs> bang this out. Like I, I do, you know, a, a 10 page script or something and uh, send it out there and, and see what happens. Yeah, I I discovered it. I the 200 word RPG challenge and I became completely obsessed with it. And to the point that I volunteered to be one of the pre judges, I would uh, read right. They would send me a few dozen of the submissions, and then I would read them and say, like, I think these ones go on to the next level. Um, but uh, and so I don't remember at that process if I discovered yours uh, in that initial process or once you became a finalist. But uh, definitely once you were a finalist, I was like, oh, this game is great. And I played it as a, in a 200 word version. I took the two of the winners from that year. And then one of the winners from that year was just too extreme to play at like a gaming event. And mm. so I substituted yours in instead. And so I played two of the winners and your game with some friends at a gaming event, um, including my business partner and the other half of wedding games, Brandon Aiden. And he's like, this game is great. And I'm like, well, to reach out to him, his emails on the website. And uh, I believe he did, uh, or he found you on Twitter or however it found and asked you to expand the manuscript into uh, the, the 200 word of manuscript into a bigger manuscript. Yeah. So like what, once the, that particular restriction was off and you could make it into, you know, thousands of words, what, uh, what kind of things did you want to bring in? Obviously like the, the rule set is like, we asked you to write it in the plus one system, which is our, you know, wedding games is little gaming D six dice pool and card system but like there's so much more in the text about the facility and the, the the all the different psychic powers some of which are sort of new to me as like you know you didn't just do telekinesis and pyrokinesis like you went through a lot of different ones so like tell tell me some more about uh the process of expanding the game into what it is now yeah um i mean it was it was interesting cuz uh i mean the whole like the the joke almost of the original 200 word version is that it's testing the the player's psychic powers right for them to to predict um yeah what's coming up so that they can activate their like character's powers uh and like I was you know wanted to like keep that that core there um which was great cuz the the card system ended up uh, I think incorporating pretty well into yeah. to plus 1 uh and then it was it was just a question of like okay so like where where is there room to you know expand and elaborate like what kind of thing do we want to do um, I think uh, the the uh, initial idea even for the two hundred word was to sort of try and capture this like children's adventure fiction which is why it was called you know psychic children on the one run from danger I wanted it to be very like upfront about like yeah this is this is what's going on uh and then but from there unless you sneak some extra words because the title doesn't yeah. count to the 200 like yeah exactly you know <laughs> hey here's here's what you're doing you know here's who you are and what's happening in the the game um but yeah and so like and then from there uh as i was writing it it was a lot sort of uh synthesizing like some of the stuff that I just liked about that kind of, of fiction, uh, like tropes of it, elements of it, but, you know, wanting to make it a little bit more uh, uh, interesting than just, you know, oh yeah, this is, this is you know, uh, uh, Akira uh, with, you know, the, the gory parts filed off kind of thing, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, so then like, you know, figuring out like, okay, like, uh, and I think one of the things that I really um, enjoyed was uh, as developing, like, you know, expanding the powers, right? Because we wanted in the original version, it's literally just you, you, you choose, like say whatever your, your kid's psychic power is. Cause I don't have the words to like lay out, you know, uh, the different options there. Um, so like then saying like, okay, so like what are different like psychic powers? You know, there's the classic ones like telekinesis and like, precognition and stuff uh but then i wanted you know more things so that's where like the the emphakinetic came from you know somebody who can like manipulate man emotions in the way that like a, a tk can manipulate you know the physical environment um 
and the uh, stuff like the the leash coming out from you know like okay like some of these powers are like kind of absurd like even with like <laughs> a, a relatively untrained child like there 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 should be something in there I think to uh, uh, contain or like explain like why the teleporting kids don't just teleport away all right. the time right um, and then the leash like from that and like the okay the you know facility has this like implant what does that imply about the rest of their structure you know like if they have access to these sorts of things like what else can they do what else do they have um and ex like sort of extrapolating from like trying to justify you know why the the teleporting kids don't just break the game in half <laughs> So did you have that kind of stuff like ready in your mind when you or or did was it a process of like kind of let's zoom out a little bit and then zoom out a little bit and then zoom out a little bit. And now we've seen what there is in this world. Yeah, it was it was definitely like uh, the the facility generally was definitely kind of in the in mind from the beginning as the antagonist. Um, I, I think uh you know the the shadowy government agency is you know like it's it's a great antagonistic force uh it shows up constantly in the kinds of fiction that's being referenced by psychic kids you know i mean it's harder to find like that sort of fiction without a shadowy government agency uh, you yeah. know i think that's so, a good way to say it yeah yeah um so like i had that in mind and then uh, the the other stuff that that developed was um, you know ex essentially just extrapolating on that like if there's a government agency that exists why do they exist is literally their only purpose you know uh, hunting down psychic children and like you know experimenting on them or is there something more there like you know they they think that they're the good guys so like what is it that they're like trying to stop and that's where you know the else came from. Uh, plus, I wanted to have a way to sort of incorporate like urban legends and myths, um, which I think the 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 sort of concept of like the else uh, does as well. You know, I wanted a jackalope. I like jackalopes. I think they're they're charming <laughs> little creatures, and uh, I was going to figure out some way to get them in there if I could. Yeah, I think the they're uh, they're kind of a totem uh, in my house as well. So uh, it's great. Um, all right, I, we don't have a ton of time uh, left on this little little thing here, but I do want to ask you, like you talked about how the 200-word RPG version of Psychic, what has become Psychic Kids was your first project. And, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> and so have... You're you're being attacked by a cat here. Yeah, yeah. He's uh he's a menace. He knows I'm not paying attention to him, so he's gotta <laughs> fix that. Okay, Walter, buddy, I'm busy. I'm sorry. I don't I don't understand what you're doing. Please get down. <laughs> we were it's he's a manifestation of the else right now. Yeah. I'm seeing it happen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, come on. Down, down. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now that that little ordeal is over, um, <laughs> where so, were we? Wonderful. I'm going to leave it all in. My uh, uh, the so I want to ask you like, what else have you have you done any other uh, games? Have you like did it did that original uh, experience and then being named as a finalist and that challenge like inspire you? Have you done other work or if if you haven't, are you planning to do some other work? Like you want to do more writing in the TTRPG space? Like what's what's on your uh, theoretical calendar or actual credits i don't know tell tell us yeah uh so right now um so psychic kids is is my my only uh sort of officially published credit right now um i did uh i, I wrote a couple more um small rpgs uh a lot of things just like you know stuff just based on whatever my like particular fixation was at the time uh, I think the the next year for the 200 word challenge, uh, I, I wrote a uh, a hidden role game uh, based on the uh, the Bachelor franchise. Okay, uh, uh, yep. I don't remember reading that one, but I'm gonna have to yeah. go look it up. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. Um. So there was that. 
you know, I did a, I did a, a pseudo lasers and feelings hack based off of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, called Tricksters and Crusaders. Um, and uh, uh, I've got, um, you know, some uh, uh, projects I'm working on right now theatrically. Uh, but once those wrap up, um, I'm actually planning on uh, working on my next uh, uh, game, uh, working on uh, an idea that I've been having bouncing around for a while, um, a, a anti-fascist post-apocalyptic game uh, based off of the uh, song 99 Red Balloons. Ooh, I, I like all of those words. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I, we can we can talk more about that uh, some other time. Uh, yeah. That sounds like a great tease. Uh, so... Michael, if anyone wants to get a hold of you to uh, check out your scripts or see your shows, maybe, or read your Twin Award RPGs, like where are you on the internet so people can come and find you if they want to? Yeah. Uh, so, so right now, um, my my main sort of internet presence is uh, I am I am at Whiskey Brannon uh, on Twitter. Um, I you know uh, I'm not uh super active in uh promoting my stuff there necessarily but it's uh it's probably the only place uh that i'm active uh at all as far as social media goes uh and then uh on itch.io uh there is a uh a, a completely unfinished uh technically even unstarted uh <laughs> page at whiskey robot um, but that is where I am going to be posting uh, more of my uh, uh, games. Um, and then I think uh, this is probably also my uh, motivation uh, to finally get on a uh, new play exchange um, and set something up there uh, for, for scripts and such. All right. Yeah. There you go. So you have a few days before this posts that uh, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time uh, this evening, Michael, and talking to us about uh, your work and psychic kids and uh, wish you all the, the best uh, in the, in the foreseeable future. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. It was, it was uh, a lot of fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing more stuff. Awesome.